Okay guys, welcome to another ranking video. Um this is a, a ranking of a director. And this time around we are doing the ranking of all 13 of Michael Bay's movies. Now, Michael Bay is a very interesting director. He's had some good films. Some are okay and some are just flat out terrible, but we have 13 movies here, and I'm going to rank, work my way up from the worst one all the way up to the best one. And so, and I'm going to go through each one of these as quick as I can because I don't want to make them, make this video too long. So, let's get started. Coming in number 13, we have The Worst of the Worst, and that's Transformers The Last Night. I've pretty much said everything I need to say about this movie in my review slash rants and in my updated transformers ranking so you pretty much know how i feel about this movie i do not feel like ranting again on transformers the last night but i am gonna say this about the movie it's like michael bay he doesn't even care anymore he's not even trying with the transformers movies anymore at least the first four movies despite some issues i had with those he tried but this he it felt like he just was not into it that much and there's a lot of stupid problems in this movie story doesn't make sense there is seven freaking editors on this movie and this movie feels le feels like a chopped up mess and, and it's bad enough that this movie is about to get an extended edition on release I don't know if it's true or not but if it is you know what I may hate this movie but guess what I'm a completist at the same time and I gotta and I gotta complete, complete a film, a movie series in my DVD collection. Well, soon to be DVD and Blu ray collection, but Transformers The Last Night is the worst of the worst. Coming to number 12 is The Rock. Now, I do like this movie. I do think this movie's pretty good. It's pretty entertaining. I think this film is awesome. You got. Good actors, Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage, Ed Harris. You have a story that works. Michael Bay does a good job directing. The writing is good. I think the music is good. But my problems with this movie is that it is a little bit too long. And um, I feel like I don't like the ending of this movie. The ending of this movie, not the ending with Nicolas Cage. The ending, I'm talking about after that part of the movie. But... I don't like the end, ending of this movie, but this was the last film that Don Simpson and Jerry Burkhardt produced together because Don Simpson, he died when they were making this movie. So, The Rock is a good movie, but I don't like the ending. That's all. Now, at number 11, we have Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, it is a... Good film. I know this movie has issues due to the writer strike and everything. The writer strike then was started back in 2007 and 2007, 2008. Um, and you can see the writer strike problems. Some of the writing is good. The writing is a little iffy. Um. There are some there, Michael, usual Michael Bay stuff that didn't work in this movie for me. Um, and kill, decision to kill me off Optimus Prime, it did make me upset when I first saw it. But it's part, I think it was part of the story. But Transformers Avenger Fallen is not too bad of a movie. It is, it does have its moments, but it could have been a little fixed up before this movie was released so at the end of the day revenge of the fallen is a is a welcome film for me at least it's, it's watchable as a guilty pleasure coming in number 10 we have pearl harbor this is not a good movie at all this is not a good movie um everyone has said it this is the one of the worst films based on a real life event. People say Titanic is bad, but I like Titanic. It's a dramatization. It's not supposed to be accurate. 
If you want accuracy, go watch the Ty Sand documentary. Go watch Pearl Harbor documentary. This is not supposed to be accurate. At, sure, they're gonna make some changes for dramatization purposes, but Titanic, I liked. But this movie tries to be Titanic and fails miserably. Um, this movie is way too long. Three hours and four minutes. It is long. Why do we have to waste a lot of t this runtime on a stupid love story with Ben Affleck, Kate Beckinsale, and Josh Hartnett that doesn't go anywhere? And... Instead of focusing on the attack, you're supposed to. They could have focused more on the attack. This, if you will cut cut a couple scenes out of this movie, and then just make this movie more about the the actual attack on Pearl Harbor, I think this would have been good. But as someone who has done his research about Pearl Harbor, this movie is very disappointing, and I want to see a movie about Pearl Harbor done right one day, with a right director, but the acting is fine, the action is nice, because that's the that's the awesome part of the movie, is when the Pearl Harbor attack actually starts happening it's shot well, you can see what's going on there's no lens flares yeah, but Pearl Harbor is just a major disappointment Coming in at number 9 is Transformers Dark of the Moon. Now, some people say this is an improvement over Revenge of the Fallen. I will say this. It is a huge step up from Revenge of the Fallen, but it has the same amount of issues. Um, it still has that some of those things in Revenge of the Fallen that just doesn't work well. The twins are not in this one. We have a new love interest in Carly Spencer. Played by Rosie Huntington Whitley, who I do like. I think she's more tolerable than Megan Fox because Megan Fox, she was fired from this movie because she said working for Michael Bay it was like working for Hitler. And I don't blame her because, but even I do kind of blame her because she decides to work with him with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2014, 2016. And those movies really hurt the turtles. But Um, but Dark of the Moon is a pretty awesome film. It is my least favorite. Is is my is one of my favorite. Fa is my one of my favorites in the Transformers series, but it is my least favorite in the original trilogy. Now the action is good. I said everything about this. I do like the music. I do love the acting from most of the cast. I like Peter Cullen, Central, Central Prime, and Larry Nemoy did a great job. And the final battle in Chicago, while it is long and could have been trimmed down a little bit, it is an awesome final battle. So, yeah. And number eight is Pain in a Game. This is another movie based on a true story. And this is much better than Pearl Harbor, but it's still... But it's still... Is a questionable movie for me because this is based on a real event, and I don't know if I like this movie or if I hate this movie. Um, um, this is a very debatable for me, and I do think that this movie is is somewhat watchable, but. Again, because it's based on a real life event, Michael Bay, he did kind of mess up stuff. But I think the acting from Mark Wahlberg, Anthony Mackie, and The Rock, everyone does a good job in this movie. I think this movie is shot well. I think the acting is fine. I think a lot of stuff in this movie is pretty good. So I do, while I do have some problems, Pain and Gain is a questionable movie for me. And I think it is somewhat better. Coming in at number 7 is 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. This was a good surprise. Because after Pearl Harbor and Pain and Gain, I feel like Michael Bay, he... This fits Michael Bay pretty well. It's got an R rating. It's about the military because he does love the military and the American flag. Which is a lot of people, they hate his films. Um, I, I really enjoy watching these watching these movie 
watching war films. I love war movies, and this was a good one. I had no expectations for this, but I really thought 13 Hours of Secret Soldiers of Benghazi was a great surprise. I loved the movie. It was so cool. And you, the acting was great. The movie is long, I will say that, but it's a good movie, guys. It's not that bad. This is Michael Bay. He put some effort into this. And just the way the movie looks is good. I like John Krasinski, James Badgedale. All the acting in this movie is great. I I just like this movie. I really do like this movie. And um, I think this movie is tad bit underrated. So, yeah. I have to say that this movie is pretty good. Now, coming in at number six, I do own this movie, Transformers Age of Extinction. I like Transformers Age of Extinction, but I admit, there are a lot of issues. Um, I like Nicola Peltz in this movie. I think she's beautiful. Michael Bay, if there's one thing he doesn't fail, is to make women look hot. But give... You could have gave her some personality so we get to know her. And if this is supposed to be a reboot, then why is the sequel to Dark of the Moon? I don't know. And yes, this movie is way too long. Two hours and 45 minutes too long. There is so much you could have cut out of this movie. And you could have gave us more of the Dinobots. Because the Dinobots were a big part of marketing. And they're, they're barely in the movie. So, I do have to say that is a little bit of a disappointment that the, the um Dinobots don't show up until the last half of the movie but I love the new robots I hate that they killed killed the rat, ratchet off but Kelsey Grammer he should have been Days of Future Past but Mark Wahlberg and um, Nicola Peltz make this movie work and Stanley Tucci made this movie work for me. I love the song Battle Cry by Imagine Dragons too and I love the new looks of the Transformers. So overall Transformers Age of Extinction while it does have problems it's a guilt no guilty pleasure for me. And I hope Transformers 6 is good cause you ain't directing. Haha. -ha. Coming in at number 5 is Armageddon. This movie gets so much crap from everyone, but I like it. I like this movie. I do. I think this is an okay movie. It's not his best film by any means necessary, but I really enjoy Armageddon. Ben Affleck, Bruce Willis, Liv Tyler. I love the song from Armageddon. John Avenger, one of my YouTubers, that is a great song That that from Armageddon. And if you play the song for a girl, it would be very, very nice. Very sweet. Um, the acting is great. Michael Clark Duncan, everyone. This mo the effects are good. I don't think the script is horrible. J.J. Abrams, Jonathan Hensley, they did a good job writing the script. I don't care what anyone says. J.J. Abrams, he bought Star Wars and he bought Star Trek back for me. So, so suck on it. If you people don't like him, that's fine. I respect your opinion. But Armageddon, I think this is pretty good. I think this is awesome. And I think it does it does have problems, again, like all Michael Bay's movies. But I really do think Armageddon, there is people out there who do like this movie. If anybody likes this movie, you can tell me in the comments down below. So Armageddon, pretty good movie. Now, coming in number four in my Michael Bay ranking is The Island. I love The Island. This is a great film. I thought this is pretty underrated. This takes place in the future. Michael Bay does an amazing job directing the script. It's great. I love it. Um, it's pretty awesome. Um, Ewan McGregor, Scarlett Johansson in this movie. This is the seventh hottest Scarlett Johansson has ever looked. Besides Don John, the MCU, Under the Skin, and all her other films. Scarlett Johansson is a gorgeous blonde woman, and I think she's great. And she's a great actress. Um, but she's one of, she's my 10th favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe female character, because... If I would put her number one on, on the top 10 M female MCU characters list, it would be too odd. If put her number one, it would be too obvious. So, 
I did the top scene was a little different, but anyways, I really do think that this movie is really awesome. The, the futuristic look, I think the acting is great, the action is there. It's very good, it's very well shot looking, and the action there is just pretty awesome. So, I have to say, The Island is a good movie. I do have problems, yeah, the movie is a little lengthy. The writing is a little bit, it does have some Michael Bay humor stuff that is not needed, but I think that this movie is pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, the Island, definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it. And if you if you want a good Scarlett Johansson movie, go, go to this. Now, we get to the top three. At number three, we have Bad Boys. This is Michael Bay's first film, and I will say he did a darn good job. This is one of the best, my favorite buddy cop movies ever, besides Lethal Weapon. Martin Lawrence and Will Smith, this put them on the map for Superstar, even though they were both being put on the map with their TV shows, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Martin, respectively. Martin and Will, they have funny chemistry, there's a lot of funny parts, and it has an awesome line where it says, drop the gun and give me some uh, tropolicious bubble gum, and some skills, <laughs> that's funny, funny, and Tay Leone, she, 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 she's gorgeous in this movie, I like her in this movie, and the action is excel, it's not too long, it has the awesome turnaround shot with both of them looking in the sky, they, I'm glad they kept that for Bad Boys 2. Can you keep, can you, Sony, can you keep that for Bad Boys 3 and 4? Um, action is nice, comedy is nice, it does have some, some, some over the top moments, but it's a, it's a Michael Bay movie, so of course it's gonna have that, and I feel like, I like, I love this movie a lot. This is, this is a good movie, and I reviewed both this one and the second one last year on my channel. You guys can check it out. But Bad Boys is just a great debut for Michael Bay. And Michael Bay, after Transformers the last night, he should make some make something good again. Like this. Now at number two, we have Bad Boys 2. Bad Boys 2 has a lot of issues. I do admit, you could cut out, you could cut out the scene with them talking in the, cam in the camera store, even though that was a funny part of the movie. And there was a deleted version of it where Mike Mar Martin says, "When we left out there, everybody was there, and then Will Smith says we didn't kill one dude, and then he makes the Teletubbies reference and." and Yes, this movie is 2 hours 27 minutes long. It is a little too long. There is a lot of CG unnecessary stuff. CGI pills. Um, a cameo by Megan Fox. A cameo by Michael Bay. Um, the camera sword. Again, you could cut out. And, um... But yeah, this, this is a pretty good movie. But the action scenes are good. The car chase scene is long... But it's real cars. It's not CG. They are there is some CGI, but most of it is real cars. And uh, I do like the scene where they go into the mortuary and investigate the bodies. That was pretty funny, especially with Will Smith looking at the one dead girl. That which the one dead girl that was pretty pretty cute, but it's a dead body. So and it's only a movie. And my favorite part of Bad Boys 2 is the last couple minutes where they go to save his sister. It's a military style like shootout, and and they blow up the house. That and I do love the acting in this movie from Will Smith, and Marlon Lawrence, Gabrielle Union is said, Johnny Tapia himself played by um, I forgot his name. Hold on. Oh, jo Jordy Mola, he was great, and the music is great, I love the soundtrack, and the Reggie scene was pretty funny, I like that scene, I don't care what anyone says. So, Bad Boys 2 may have issues, but I like it, and I, I can't wait for Bad Boys 3 and Bad Boys for Life. The fourth one should be called Bad Boys for Life. 
Now is my number one favorite Michael Bay movie. I gotta go with the first Transformers. Some people call this the good, only good one. And some people say this is one of the only two that are watchable. Because this one, Dark of the Moon, some people find watchable. But I like the first four movies. The last night I may not like, but it did have some moments I do like. And I'm... I do want that movie. Want to get that movie because I'm a completist, and sometimes you gotta own the bad movie to know the good movies. But the first Transformers, I thought, has the best story, and the characters were not so goofy and over the top as Michael Bay would do, especially the parents. Megan Fox look was great in here. Shia LaBeouf, he was great in here. I love the way the CGI looks on all the Autobots. The first time you see Optimus um transforming the music just swoops in. I love I love that. And the action scene at the end of New York City, that's pretty awesome. And Hugo Evans Megatron, great casting. Peter Cullen, great to hear him. Um and <laughs> Bumblebee is pretty funny. And there's not a whole lot of super humor in this. And when you get to the action, the action is great. Two hours, 23 minutes, I didn't feel it. And I th I have rest in peace, Chester Bennington from Linkin Park. You were an awesome singer in Linkin Park. And I thank you, Linkin Park, for giving me three so great songs. Even songs in your other two movies like Powerless, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. And you also did a song for one of the songs for the Queen of the Damn soundtrack. So thank you, Lincoln Park, for all your music. You were great. It's not gonna be the same without Chester Bennington. But I do love the song What I've Done. That's a great song. What I done Sorry. Um but this this movie is awesome. I think it's underrated. But that's my ranking of all 13 Michael Bay's movies. I hope it didn't go too long. Let me know what, how would you rank all 13 of his movies down below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? And if you like this video, you can click here and we can all have a good time.